Hey, it's Dry Bear. It's been more than a several months since the release of Helldivers 2, which means that now is about the time that we start getting the articles and arguments and posts about how it has lost most of its player base. But as someone who has worked in video games before, watched their CCU numbers grow and fall and how those change over time, especially with new content updates, I wanted to give my perspective on where Helldivers 2 is right now. So this is what I'm talking about here. We see a lot of articles. This happens all the time with new games especially and huge emphasis on this games that saw a rampant release where it became more colloquial kind of like the hit new thing to do we see a large number of players influxing into the game trying it out and we know i mean obviously that a majority of those players, because they're playing it since it's a fad at the time, are not going to be your long-term players. They're not really Helldivers 2 players. They're just playing it because it's the thing to play or because their spouse or friend or their gaming buddies uh, decided to convince them to get the game. And so over time, usually within a couple weeks to a month, but uh, in this case, it's been almost four months for them to fall off of there. They decide that they're going to go play something else or they go back to their core game that they're used to playing. But yes, they are right. If you look at the initial launch, their peak of 458,000, 700,000 CCU on Steam for one platform, this is their peak here. They are now down to about 10% uh, of that with peaking at around 45,000. So they've lost, uh, you know, they're down to 10% of what they were before. If you just look at this data in this case here. Uh, but obviously it's very important to keep in mind that, that there's all, there's few, very few platforms that exist on the internet right now where they have public CCU MAU numbers of the active player counts on there. And Steam is one of the only ones that exist, which means that we don't have public accurate information that represents how many people are currently playing a game on PlayStation or on Xbox or on Switch or those kind of things, right? So you look at this as a single platform for a game. And typically the PC audience is an audience that jumps games more frequently than other uh, other platforms do usually partially because I think PC gaming is a little bit more social than console gaming console gaming is usually um, depending on where you are in the world and the culture that you're in it's usually a way to like let off steam and relax and enjoy games whereas PC gaming becomes more of a uh, a more of a social interaction between people and groups and that sort of thing so that can have a big impact on the game itself but if you see they launched here uh, February 8th is the first uh, CCU mark here for Helldivers 2. They peaked at about 458,000 concurrent, which is absolutely phenomenal. It's uh, definitely, you know, that's the top five, top 10, very, very strong. Very few games in history ever reach a concurrent player count on a single platform of, of this many, like, you know, over 400,000. It's, it's astonishing. Um, and then they've taken about four months to kind of work their way down to a very stable number, right? Since the, the end, middle or end of May, They've been hovering at about 45 to 50,000 CCU active uh, on uh, PC, which is actually very, very good. Uh, very few games, like I said, end up in that same category, right? So if we go to like a one week mark, we're gonna see them kind of staying very steady. There's a little bit of a slight decline, a slight slope on this uh, as it comes down, but it's not like, like this is a very good steady flow, ebb and flow of like the daily, you know, as the earth turns and the sun goes up and down, uh, people getting on the game and playing. And I would argue, at least in my experience, games like this that tend to be on uh, a single console platform that's only available on PS4 right now and on PC, the PlayStation audience for a game like this, I would estimate is probably around two to 2.5 times the size of the PC audience, which means that if we're getting 45K CCU for like a, on a given day, for uh, Helldivers 2 without any major events or promotions, then I would say the, play that the PlayStation audience is probably around 100 to like 130,000 CCU on top of that as well, which is very, very good. That is a healthy game that is thriving and doing well. And keep in mind that they haven't really had, they've had like war bands coming out, new weapons coming out, new units coming out, but they haven't had their big tentpole moment that releases a brand new way to play the game, a new mode, a new thing, right? Like there's always going to be more things as part of the game that can be more of a marketing moment for them. Now they have teased that they're planning to add in a new faction. Right now you have the autom automatons and you have the uh, Zerg or the Tyranid or the, <laughs> you have the, the aliens and you have the robots and they have talked about going and bringing in more of the, uh, the Eldar or, you know, 
like the Protoss race, the thing that existed in Helldivers 1, the, the, the Illuminate as an option, and that would be a major content expansion for them that would bring people back to the game. And on top of that, you have to keep in mind that they aren't currently on Xbox, and I imagine after watching the game you know rise and fall over the course of the year at least if i was in their shoes i would be looking to release on xbox probably in the fall like around the time that the big games are coming out maybe right before or just after right before the holiday season is when you'd want to target having this game come out on xbox now it is a sony exclusive sony is very proud of this game they're very excited about the success of this game and how popular it is and because it's a game that's been doing so well i imagine that they want to keep that rolling now if helldivers 2 does go to xbox typically i would expect to see maybe 1.5 or two times the amount of active players on xbox as related to pc so anywhere from like 60 to 100 000 or 90 000 ccu on xbox you put all this together and you have a thriving healthy game that is growing now there's also the chance that since it is a sony driven sony published uh, you know, exclusive for PlayStation that it just never comes to Xbox. That's not an option for them. They're not planning to do that. And that's going to be locked out. However, there are more competitors for Helldivers 2. The map mode for Halo Infinite. The Hell Jumpers option is coming. And is, I think it's actually already available on Xbox to play. So there are competitions there that might drive them towards wanting to do that. But at this point, we don't have anything official that says that they do want to bring Helldivers 2 to Xbox. And again, I would say this is actually quite a successful down trade from their initial launch that hype moment where we know that not all those players are going to stay in the game taking four months to drop down to a steady ccu is actually quite a long time most games that have this kind of success they'll usually drop down to a steady ccu within like a month or two not quite this long especially going into the summer so that's a big thing to think about is where the game is at and i would say there's not really any major cause for concern unless they can you know they keep running into issues or they just don't update the game at all then we'd probably see this decline continue a little bit further here but this is looking like it's going to be a steady CCU for them going forward as long as they keep the game updated and don't make any major mistakes. Well, let's move on to the next topic, which is the idea of bringing people back to the game, because I would argue that there really hasn't been anything yet for Helldivers 2, you know, marketing wise, like tentpole moment. What I mean by tentpole moment is like an expansion, a brand new way to play to the game, like a really loud megaphone thing that they can shout to the rooftops over the mountaintops and say, hey, come play Helldivers 2. We've got this new shiny thing. They haven't really had any of those yet. They've had, you know, little like regular content updates to keep people interested as a live service game so they've added in new mechs and new drops and new weapons and things like that but nothing major and i think one of the good ones to look at here is going to be counter-strike global offensive and also uh counter-strike 2 there was actually a very weak portion for go in the very beginning of its uh, lifespan where it kind of stayed slow and you know it ended up bumping up then the content slowed a little bit and it fell back down again then we saw some big moments and that's kind of moving up and up and we have plenty of content like that as well you can also look at games that are entirely seasonal like path of exile which has a very good record of being shown on their uh their like steam charts here going back several years and since they are very seasonal when they have a new season that comes out they get a bunch of players coming back in and then they get that kind of trickling down over time so this is a multi-year look if we look at like a three-month look you can see that the start of the season happened and it comes back down and then the next season happens and it goes back up and then it comes back down and that's because they're releasing brand new content people chew through that content and fall down which this is a lot more dramatic than a game like helldivers 2 which has this steady flow and there still are hordes of people getting on helldivers 2 every single day on pc and again i imagine it's at least 2 to 2.5 x that on playstation right now uh, for people that are playing the game so the fact they're able to hold with minimal content updates right it's still the same two enemy times mostly the same maps they have brand new weapons and they have regular content updates but there's not like a you know a new a major new addition to the game that has really shook everyone to their core so i would say that they're in a very good spot right now and i wouldn't really believe any of the doom and gloom or people saying that it's lost 90 percent of its player base this is an argument that always comes out when uh very popular games end up getting really popular and falling way down it's like it lost 90 percent, 99 percent, whatever they look at its absolute peak and they look at its absolute trough and compare the numbers together and the last thing that's worth mentioning about games like helldivers 2 is that they are primarily designed i would say that the core design of helldivers 2 is built to be a 
party or group game. Like, you want to be playing with other people. While you kill, you still can play Helldivers 2 solo, and I play Helldivers 2 solo quite a lot for the extra challenge. It's better played with a group of people, and even better than that is playing with people that you know. And so because it is a social game, because it is an online game, that can come with some, uh, you know, impacts on how the uh, active player rate changes as well. Primarily because, you know, if, you know, say you have two friends that play the game, you always jump into a squad together and you jump down and you start farming and you start playing but then one of those three people ends up deciding that they don't want to play the game for a little while they want to take a break then the other two still try to play together they try to find one or two people to fill the group but maybe you know one of the two decides they're in the same boat and they drop off and you're by yourself your friends don't get online anymore and so you're taking a break from the game not because you particularly like you're not hating on hell divers too you still enjoy it it's just you know your friends aren't online as much as they used to be and so you don't have as much reason to get online and play specifically as well and this happens all the time with these kinds of games so when a new update comes out that's going to be the big telling point for hell divers 2 is how do they bring people back to the game if they want to even without all that is still very impressive that they've managed to keep this active of a player base uh, with minimal updates, right? Some minor content increases, some gameplay, that sort of thing. That has had a really positive impact on them. And right now, the game I would say the game is very stable. And the last thing, the second, to, I guess the last, last, last thing that's worth talking about, mainly because if I don't mention it, then people are going to probably mention it in the comments a whole bunch. And that is the idea of uh, their handling of the live service. I've seen a lot of people that have negative views on the balancing of the game, particularly about uh, nerfing things that they really enjoy or buffing things that people don't really like using, which means they're being forced to use weapons they don't like, or their, uh, you know, their favorite weapons or favorite ways of playing have been historically very much nerfed. And I would say that balancing a live service game is a bit of an art form, and it's something that you would expect a live service team to learn over time with lots of practice. So hopefully in the last few, you know, four or five months or the first half of the year, they've been working on trying to understand what their player base expects. Sometimes you have to go by the numbers on what is doing very well. You may want to nerf that down or what is doing very poorly, right? Just the overall performance stats, but you also have expectations and subjectivity to take into account as well. If there's something that is very strong but feels very weak based on its implementation in the game. Maybe it needs to have better effects or it needs to have a different purpose or it needs to be redesigned in some way. And if you nerf that when it already doesn't feel great, even though it's doing quite well, that can have a very negative impact on the perception that the player base has on that item or weapon or gameplay uh, mechanic in general. And so you can end up causing a lot of problems by just kind of going by the stats on what is being effective and what is not, especially in a PvE only game where you know if things are a little imbalanced or a little bit wacky or a little bit wild that can end up serving in your favor because that you're not you're not you know, you're not going up against other players, you're going up against hordes of enemies, and because it's PvE, it's going to be okay if you have a little bit more wild balance numbers going back and forth. But let me know what you think about the state of Helldivers 2. Are you still playing the game? Have you played it or not? Is it something that's on your radar? I've even seen people say that they never really understood the hype for Helldivers 2. It didn't never looked interesting for them. So let's have a conversation in the comments about what exactly this game is going forward and what the long-term, uh, you know, effectiveness or interest level this game can hold over the next coming years. If you found value in today's video, leave a like down below, leave a comment for the algorithm to help this video get seen by more people, and don't forget to check out my other channels for other content and other stuff and other things.